recently looked at two JavaScript related extensions from the FSF, those being Libre.js and JShelter. Both of these are a part of the free JavaScript campaign, and they both have a fairly good baseline. Like, the idea of what they're trying to achieve is fairly good, but I was incredibly critical of these extensions because they need a lot of work. They just have basic usability features that really are completely missing. But I am consistently told about another extension, that extension being NoScript. Now, when you install NoScript, it's not really going to look like that much has changed. Going to a website like YouTube, everything is still going to work perfectly fine. But under the surface, a lot of things are actually different. Now, even though it is called NoScript, the purpose of NoScript isn't just disabling all JavaScript. If that's what you want to do, you don't need an extension for that. So the way that it works is based on a trust system, and you have complete control over what domains are going to be trusted. So there are three states. We have default, trusted, and then untrusted. So default is basically the general state you want JavaScript to have powers for. So let's say you don't want it to be able to do things like uh, access objects or access frames, things like that, then you can go and disable that. But the trusted option, which you also have control over, basically allows it by default to do anything. Untrusted is disable everything. But if you want to go and say, have trusted be a bit less powerful or untrusted be more powerful, you absolutely can do that. But keep in mind, when you modify something like default, trusted or untrusted, it's going to modify that for every single domain that has that setting. So if you go and make untrusted, say, less restrictive, then everything untrusted will be less restrictive. So in some cases, you may want to set a custom setting, and that is something we can actually go and do. So let's say we want to give a custom setting to the youtube.com domain. Clicking on the last icon here, I guess the second last, the last of the, the script icons, this is going to let you set custom settings for this domain. So let's say I want it to have... Uh, I don't want it to have object or unrestricted CSS, but I will leave the rest enabled. Well, in that case, it's going to go and refresh the page. And as we can see, it has that custom setting. And in this case, it seems like everything's still working. So it might actually be fine to run it like this. Now, sometimes you want to go and fully trust the website, but you don't want to leave it trusted all of the time. So obviously, you could go to each individual domain and then manually click on trust. But that is really, really annoying. So what you can do instead is click on this icon right here and this is going to grant every single domain on the website temporary trust. As we can see everything that wasn't already trusted is now set to temp trust except for the custom one that is still set to custom. Now that one probably should go to temporary trusted. I feel like that might be a bug but that might also be intentional design. Anyway, if once you're done with all of that, you realize, oh, I don't actually need this temporary trust, what you can do is go and click revoke privileges right here, and now everything's going to go back to the way that you had it before. With a site like Twitter, it does not function altogether with the default settings. Now, you can get it functioning if you go and actually tweak the individual domains and tweak what things they actually have available, but if you just want to use Twitter in this tab and not want to go and modify that, what you can do is click on Disable Restrictions for this tab, and then even though nothing for this site has actually changed, it is going to work temporarily just on this tab. But if we go to another tab in my browser, this one isn't going to work. I'm going to see the exact same problem from before. Now, there is also the option to disable all restrictions globally by clicking on this button right here. Now, it's kind of funny that the extension refers to this as dangerous because this is basically just the default state of using your browser without having the extension installed. Now, as we can see from Twitter here, out of the box, some sites are just going to break. I believe with Twitter, for it to actually function, it needs to be able to access most of JavaScript, not everything, but most of it. And if we go and let's actually trust the site and see if we can get it working. So this will take us to the next page, but it's still not going to function from here. So it says fail script polyfill. So clearly it's trying to run a script in the background and that's just not working. So let's go and trust this site as well. And okay, that is actually going to get it working perfectly fine. 
But as I mentioned before, there's probably some extra tweaking we can do to limit what Twitter can do. This is one of the things that NoScript is great for. If you want to spend the time configuring the sites that you actually use to limit everything the site can actually do, this is an absolutely fantastic extension for you. It gives you a lot of power to do so to configure exactly what you want to see running, and it does it with a pretty clean interface as well. Now, even though we fully trusted Twitter and the Twitter image domain, one of the things that isn't running is Google Analytics. Let's go and fully untrust that and see if it keeps working. Twitter keeps functioning perfectly fine. So we still have an improvement over what we had without the extension. And I've noticed that for a lot of sites, you can get away with just disabling the analytics, like Google Analytics, whatever they're using, and it will still function. Some sites do check if it's working, but a lot of sites just assume, hey, what are JavaScript blockers? I've never heard of that, and it's just going to let you do it. Now, every single domain you visit, even if you don't modify its permissions, are going to be listed inside of the per site settings. So under this tab right here, this is incredibly convenient. So this means even if you don't go back to that website, you actually can go and modify the permissions directly from here. There is also a search bar. So let's search for anything Google related and you can just block everything related to Google if you don't like it altogether. Also, it gives you the option to actually add something into this list as well. Now, at some point in the future, you may want to go to a different browser or maybe you want to go and upgrade your system and reinstall everything. And if you've gone and modified a bunch of sites, having to go and reset all of that in NoScript is really, really annoying. Luckily, there is also import and export functionality as well. All you need to do is just click on the button you need to do and it's going to work as you'd expect that functionality to work. Outside of the site configuration, there's not really much you can configure, but there really doesn't need to be. One of the things that I feel like probably should be enabled by default is list full addresses in the permissions pop-up. So by default, if we go to something like say YouTube, uh, with the double click domain or the Ajax domain right here, it's not actually showing everything that it could be showing. But if we go and enable that feature, and now I think we can just click on the extension again, all of these sites that have extra things to them are going to be listed as well. So for some things, maybe you want to run this site, but you don't want to run the API version, for example. Even though the site is incredibly ugly, if there's anything about NoScript you're unsure about, whether that is what the different kinds of uh, icons in the bar up here mean, if you're not sure about what the different kinds of permissions mean, how the site matching works, how you can go beyond JavaScript and block Silverlight and Flash, even though there's not any websites that are using those anymore. If you're unsure about anything, the documentation is actually really, really extensive, and I really recommend reading through it. Even though NoScript started as a Firefox extension, and most of the references on the website are going to be about Firefox, it actually exists over on Chromium as well. So I've been testing it in Brave, and it works almost identically. I don't actually see a difference between the Firefox version. Maybe there is some feature difference, but at least from what I've seen, it's nothing that you're really going to care about. But if you want to install it, click this button off to the left that really, really looks like it's going to install malware. I don't know why that is the button they use, but this will take you to the Chrome Web Store, or if you're on Firefox, it'll take you to the Firefox... Web I, what is it called on Fire? I have no idea. Anyway, if you really care about limiting JavaScript, I think that NoScript is probably one of the best options you can go with. Sure, LibreJS is great if what you care about is whether the JavaScript is free software, but that's not my priority. My priority is whether the JavaScript is harmful, not whether it's harmful and also free software. I've said it before, I think fully disabling JavaScript just doesn't make any sense for most people. Sure, you can get away with it by, you know, picking and choosing which websites you want to use and sites that don't work, finding third-party tools that connect to the API or just, you know, making them yourself. 
yeah, you can do that. But I think it's better for most people to just limit the power that JavaScript can have while still having a productive experience on the internet. This isn't a major feature, but I just want to mention that NoScript now has keyboard support. So if you want to navigate all of it without using your mouse, that is something you can do as well, which might be useful if you use one of like the, the Vim plugins to move around your browser anyway. I just thought I would mention that. Now, if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribers only bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brutal Ops and Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out. <laughs>